The Oklahoma City Thunder are quite literally doing something we have never seen before in NBA history, I feel like you could say. Um, this is a team with a guy that just averaged almost 32 points a game. Uh, his co-star, Josh Giddy, who averaged 16-8. and eight. Lou Dort, one of the better perimeter defenders in the league. And the runner-up for Rookie of the Year, as well as a lottery pick in case and Wallace that can really defend and can play pretty good on offense. And then you also have Chet Holmgren, the number two overall pick in last year's draft. And the largest amount of draft picks we've seen in NBA history. So we're going to be talking all about that today. So make sure to hit the like button and leave me a comment down below. Um, also, make sure to subscribe. I mean, if you're not subscribed, there's a very, very good chance you're not. Just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It takes like a second out of your time. Turn on the post notifications as well because, you know, we're talking NBA basketball all season long. Uh, now let's go ahead and get started looking at how insane this is. Here is a picture of the <laughs> draft picks owned by the Oklahoma City Thunder. Um... 2024, they have the Clippers first, Houston's first, their own first, and Utah's first. Now that Houston first is a bit protected, but still, that's crazy. You can pause and see the rest of this list here. 2025, they have their own, a swap between Houston and the Clippers, Miami, and Philadelphia. 2026, they have quite a few. 2027, they have their own, and Denver's. 2028, they have their own in a couple of seconds. 2029, they have their own in four seconds. And then in 2030, they have their own. So, you know, maybe they go out, they do a little bit more <laughs> trading for picks. I, I don't think it would really be worth it at this point, but you could do that. Uh, and yeah, this is uh, quite the collection of talent here. This is genius, honestly, because they can just go best player available for the next four years with five or six picks a draft and just get winning players like they did li this year with Case and Wallace. You talk about a winning player, elite, elite defender, uh, can play very good out of the pick and roll as well. Um, he can knock down the three ball off the ball. Like I said, right there, boom. Even, you know, throw up prayers. Uh, and sometimes they get answered. Uh, six foot four, like I said, one of the best perimeter defenders in this draft class. Uh, I know he's a guard, but still, I mean, heck, you can just take best player available because of your abundance of salary cap your abundance of draft picks, you can really do whatever you want to do in the draft for the next five years because of how well you've set yourself up uh, in the past. Excellent job done by Sam Presti in the Oklahoma City Thunder. And people forget, Chet Holmgren is a rookie this year. Uzman Jiang, I believe I finally pronounced his name right, is technically, not technically, but he is basically a rookie this year. Chet, the former number two overall pick, let's not forget how dominant he was at Gonzaga. He also dominated both Summer League and the Pro-Ams that he was playing in before he got hurt last season. And this is a team that went from having the number two overall pick, which was Chet Holmgren. Without that number two overall pick, they still almost became a play-in team. Now they get that number two overall pick plus the number two number 12 pick from this year's class and Uzma Jiang who played in 39 games last year but is about 6 foot 11 and can do a little bit of everything you want from a big wing I mean it, it's all set up beautifully for the Oklahoma City Thunder here we haven't even talked about their superstar duo really yet Chet Hunt or not Chet Hunt Josh Giddy and Shea Gilgis Alexander Let's go ahead and you know, spend, spend a few minutes here talking about them. Josh averaged about 16 and a half points, about eight assists. That's pretty good for a guy with really no back. I mean, he just dribbles around people. Or excuse me, he averaged about eight rebounds, six assists per game, which is pretty solid as well. You know, played a little bit of defense there. And he's six foot seven, so he, you know, he's long. Not necessarily athletic, but he's long enough to make an impact on the defensive side of the ball. And by the way, he shot at 48% from the field in his second year in the NBA. 33% from three, that's still coming along. Uh, but I think Shea makes up for it. 31.4 points per game, 5.5 rebounds a night. So you look at those numbers, dude is a monster already. What more can you ask from him? So let's, let's take a look down here at the field goal percentage. 51%! No, I lied. He's not really... That great of a three-point shooter coming in at only 35%. But 51% from the field on 31.4 points per game. For a guy as young as Shea, that is special. He also plays defense. 
these two guys are going to have a field day this year for the Oklahoma City Thunder, as well as these two wrecking havoc on the perimeter. Both of these guys are winning players. Lou Dort averaged 13.7 points, 4.6 rebounds. Monster, 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 monster. Uh, he's, you know, they, he looks like an NFL linebacker. Now, he's not not elite from his shooting splits. Don't, don't pay too much attention to those. He is here for defensive purposes, um, and he, he's going to clamp you up. Also, about 2.1 assists, 31 minutes per game. I don't know. I think they're going to start Jalen Williams, honestly. So maybe Lou Dort comes off the bench. We'll talk about that later on in this video. Um, but Jalen Williams, 14 points per game and 4.5 and rebounds as a rookie playing off the ball as really the fourth or fifth option most of the season on offense. He came off the bench for the majority of the year. I mean... 52% from the field and 36% from three as a rookie. I was high on this guy, but clearly Sam Presti knew something that I did not. The dude went out. They, he got this guy at, what, 12? Heck of a pick. 22 years old, also averaged 1.4 steals. What can this dude not do for you? Now, they also have a couple of secret weapons. Isaiah Joe and uh, Alexei Pokusevsky, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Um, Joe averaged about 9.5 points and 2.4 rebounds, but, you know, he kind of came out of nowhere last year. Got cut by the Sixers, picked up by the Thunder. It was a heck of a pickup as well because he can do a lot for them. 44% from the field, 41% from three on about six attempts a game. That is, that's very good. He's their secret weapon. He is their sniper, um, if you will. Out there on the perimeter. Making up for Josh Giddy, making up for Shea Gildas Alexander, not really being able to shoot. Uh, and then they got the unicorn, Alexei Pokusevsky. 8.1 points per game, 4.7 rebounds. Now those numbers might not really jump off the page to you. And they shouldn't, because those are not elite numbers. But he's a guy that, with an increased role this year, 44% from the field, 37% from three last year, with an increased role, he will most definitely up his production, and I'm very excited to see what Poku can do next year. Again, only 21 minutes per game, and he's 22 years old. I, I'm, I'm so excited for this Oklahoma City Thunder team next year. I mean, you're looking at a team that, taking a look at the lineups, this is my projection also kind of going off of what you guys said in the last Thunder video. It's going to be Shea, Josh Giddy, Lou Dort, Jalen Williams, Chet Holmgren. That's their best five players, and you're going to kind of go to positionless basketball, just throwing your best five out there, and I feel like some good things are going to happen when these five guys are out there. I mean, Josh can play the one or the two, Shea can play the one or the two, Jay Will can play the two, the three, or the four, Lou Dort, he can play the two or the three, and then Chet can play really the four or the five. You know, you're missing a little bit of a little bit of beef down inside with, with Chet there, but I think, I think it'll be all right uh, because, hey, they also got to worry about guarding Chet. Now, let's take a look at the bench here. We're not going to try and pronounce this dude in the middle's name. Just know he's certified. He's a hooper from over in Europe, and uh, he can play. I think he was a multiple-time EuroLeague MVP. He got about three years, $23 million to come play in America. And um, pretty good pretty good deal for him. He's going to be the backup power forward, I think, for this Thunder team. You also got Kaysen Wallace, Isaiah Joe, Poku, and Usman Jiang, who we've all talked about throughout this video. This Thunder team is going to be good next year. And I think they can make the playoffs. Now, they still probably need to address the starting center spot. You know, you don't really have much beef down low um, with Chet. He's not exactly um, a, a big, powerful guy by any stretch of the imagination. But, you know, which is why I kind of propose bringing in like a Brooke Lopez. But we will see. Um, I think this Thunder team is very good. I think they're good enough to make the playoffs next year. As crazy as that sounds, as good as the Western Conference is, I really do believe that. So with that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like the button and hit the subscribe button, uh, as well as leaving a comment down below. It'll really help us out in the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching today's video.